Hey everybody, this is Adele 3590. I have one of these in the office and it's working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back off it. I'm going to start taking some voltages on off the motherboard and just follow the 19 volt rail because we get a few of these in and it would be useful to know, you know, just have a a brief understanding as to where the 19 volts goes and what values we should expect from each of the components. So let's take a tour of this board then. The board on that model of laptop is an LAG717P. Here it is right here, LAG717P. So we can see that our DC power jack comes in here. And we have six pins that connect to the board. So if I check out the schematic for this, we're fortunate enough to have a schematic for this model. You can see that we we have six main pins and then two ground pins, which I presume the ground pins are just the two pins here and here. But we have pins one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I've checked these on the board and they map out as follows. So we have pin one here, which as you can see from our diagram is through an inductor to ground. Pin two is the same. Pin three is an ID pin by the look of it. That's pin 3 here so as you can see that it comes down PSID pin 4 which is here is marked with an X so I don't think it's connected and then 5 and 6 are where our 19 volts comes onto the board so what we need to do is to measure there and see if we are getting our 19 volts onto the board so I introduce my black probe I place it to ground we can find ground in many places but I'll find it right here and we switch our multimeter to volts DC and I place my red probe to pin 5 and when I place it to pin 5 obviously with the charger plugged in we've got 19.4 volts there so we can mark that 19.4 volts at this position actually before I do that you can see here that when we zoom in on this it doesn't immediately show where that 19 volts goes, but we do have a number of vias here. So it seems like we're going to the other side of the board. And I'm going to follow that 19.4 volts to see where it goes next. I flipped the board and what we can see right here is that those vias come out at this point right here. Now, so if we take a look at our schematic again, we can see that Our pin, our 19 volt pin is here, it comes across here, and the next component in line is PL1. So I can see that that component is right here, so we know we're on the right path. So I measure again right here, which uh, we just get another ground, um, and we can measure once again. And what I would expect to find here is that the 19.4 volts is just going through this inductor and is present here also. So I place my probe here measuring for DC volts and I get 19.4. So that's where it's come to right here on the schematic. So it then goes off and wherever this goes here. There's a number of capacitors here. I think they correspond to the smaller components. But we're just going to follow along the main line. And right now we're here. So let's see where that goes. So if we follow along, PL1 here follows this path right here. I'm just following the track here. Goes down and down here to the first MOSFET. Now we're expecting 19.4 volts here also because that's just come through the inductor. But we have the common configuration here which shows two MOSFETs, MOSFET number one, MOSFET number two, and then that goes to a small value resistor that's a physically pretty big resistor, that's a current sense resistor. So let's take a look at the schematic and see how that looks. So this is the schematic for this section of the board right here. As you can see we have our 19 volts input right here that comes on to our first MOSFET which is an n-channel MOSFET that's a PQB11 and that is this one right here PQB11 so when the gate pin number four in this is high that allows this switch this MOSFET to turn on and that carries the 19 volts then here this comes down through this wire here up to our second MOSFET which is PQB12 that's this MOSFET right here and 
it's actually the same MOSFET so if the gate pin number four on this is high that allows our 19 volts to come from here which is the source to the four pins on the other side which is the drain and then next in the path is PRB02 which is this right here and this is a current sense resistor so the purpose of the current sense resistor is you allow the current flow through a known resistance value um, which creates a voltage drop using Ohm's law and from that voltage across these two pins here which is sent back to another chip it can work out what the current is and if you know if the current is too high indicating a short and it can then shut down the circuit if that's the case so right here then we have 19 volt B and this indicates that this is the 19 volts that is gone out to the rest of the secondary circuits so this is a common type of configuration on these type of laptops you've two MOSFETs and then a current sense resistor so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the values of the voltages at these MOSFETs uh, when it's turned on and working okay so let's take some more measurements then so with my multimeter in volts DC we place our black probe to ground and we're going to start taking some measurements again with our red probe so our 19 volts has come down to here so I'm just going to confirm that on the pins of the MOSFET here that I have 19 volts so I place my probe right here and sure enough we have 19 volts at this point so let's just mark out the pins on that MOSFET so we know which of the pins are which so we have our four drain pins on this side we have three source pins right here and this is the gate pin which switches the MOSFET on and off this is an end channel MOSFET so if this gate pin is high then it's switched on if it's low the MOSFET is switched off so I place my probe here to take the measurement and I measure 24.6 volts at this point so that's high so the MOSFET should turn on so our 19 volts should be coming from here through to our source I place my probe on the source pin right here and I confirm that there is 19 volts at this point obviously it's a working laptop so we're taking the working measurements when it, it is actually fully functional so straight across from here uh, these source pins feed to this MOSFET right here this is actually the same MOSFET just upside down so if I mark out the pins on that we see that we have our three source pins here our gate pin here and four drain pins on this side so we know we have our 19.4 volts to this source pin right here so if the gate pin is high it will be switched on and we'll have 19 volts over here if this pin is low we will have our MOSFET turned off and there will be no voltage here at all so I place my probe to check what is on the gate pin and there's 24.6 volts on the gate pin so that means our MOSFET has been switched on and I measure 19.4 volts on the drain pins of this MOSFET also the last component in our sequence here is this power resistor so I measure right here and we also have 19.4 volts at this point I've quickly written down here what those voltages should be so if you take PQB11 on the gate it should be high so we have 24.6 volts and that allows the flow of the 19.4 from the drain to the source so we should have 19.4 on both the source and drain pins PQB12 is the same the gate pin should be high 24.6 volts on this one that turns the MOSFET on which means that we have both 19.4 volts on both sets of uh, source and drain pins also that just comes through this resistor so we also have 19.4 volts on this section here and that 19.4 volts then goes out to all of the other secondary circuits I'm just going to give a quick review of what I've done in this video here um, these are all of the voltages when the laptop is fully functional my idea of course is that if I get one in that's broken I can then compare the values so we started off right here at the input pin so we had 19.4 volts right here we followed along that line to PL1 which was the big SMD inductor on the back side of the board there was 19.4 volts after this also that 19.4 volts then appears on the first MOSFET which is PQB11 on the gate pin of that end channel MOSFET is 24.6 volts bit curious about that one I would have expected the same 19.4 volts there but that's what I measured on both MOSFETs however that is high so that was turning on the MOSFET so our 19 volts carries through the MOSFET to 
MOSFET number two. So that same 19.4 volts is on the source pin, source pins of PQB12. So 24 volts is on the gate of that, switching it on. So the 19.4 volts carries through that MOSFET to the other side here onto our current sense resistor, and our 19.4 volts then appears on the other side of the current sense resistor also. This is referred to at this point in the schematic as plus 19 VB. Now if I look at the schematic, that shows me that that is the 19 volt, you see it right here, it says 19 VB. So that is the 19 volts that feeds to the other secondary, secondary circuits to generate the lower voltages like the 1 volt, 5, 3 volt, etc, etc. So it's quite an important part of the circuit. So what we might do in the future is simulate some failures with this. If there's any interest in that, just let me know. What I might try and do is just short a few of the rails and just introduce a couple of faults and see what happens with these uh, MOSFETs uh, when you simulate a failure. That's all I got for today. Um, more fixes during the week, no doubt. Um, if you've got any comments, please leave them down below and I'll try and respond to as many as I can. Thanks for watching.